Hi, I'm Martha Collison. I'm a food writer and recipe creator, and I'm cooking on the Waitrose channel. Growing up, dinner time always meant family time. Big dishes that we could all get stuck into. Beef lasagna was one of my favourites back then and it's still one of my favourites now, except now I like to put my own spin on it. This series is sponsored by Muti, who've been making great quality Italian tomato-based products in Parma for 120 years. So this lasagna starts classically like any other lasagna with a ragu and the first thing we need is onions. So I've got one large white onion and I'm going to dice this up. Lasagna is not the quickest dish to make but once it's in the oven you can go about your day, get on with other things. It kind of cooks itself once it's in there. So the onions are ready so now I'm going to move on to chopping up my garlic. So I'm going to remove the knobbly ends and then let's finally chop this as well. Wonderful. So I'm going to pop a little bit of oil into a large pan, add in our onions and you want to stir this over a low heat. We're not looking for them to colour, we're just looking for them to soften down nicely before we add our meat. So the onions are softening so now I'm going to prepare the aubergine. The aubergine is quite an unusual thing to find in a lasagna but I love the way it combines with the beef and it's a good way to bulk out a meaty dish that's not quite so expensive. So we're going to cut it down into cubes. I first cut it into slices and then it's easier to dice it down. Food was always really central to my family growing up. It was a time that we'd all come together around the table, talk about our day and even though the food isn't the most important part, it's a thing that brings people together. So we can set that to one side until our onions are ready. So the onions are nice and soft, so we're ready to put in our beef mince. I'm using Aberdeen Angus Lean Beef Mints. This has got about 5% fat, which is perfect for something like a ragu, because it's not too fatty and it won't make your sauce too heavy. And we want to get this nice and brown all over. I've done a lot of cooking over the last 18 months as I found myself at home a lot more, but I've really enjoyed the slower pace and changing shopping habits, getting to go and experiment a little bit more with flavours. The mince is nice and brown, so we are ready to add in our spices. Now this is what sets this lasagna apart from the rest. We want Lebanese Seven Spice, which is an amazing blend, and then we want ground cumin. And finally, pole bibber. Now this is an amazing chilli flake that I feel like I've really grown to love over the last 18 months. It's got a lovely warming spice, but it's not too hot. So it's perfect for those of you that aren't too keen on chilli. So now I'm going to add in the aubergine. You can really smell all those amazing spices coming alive. It's such a fragrant lasagna. Even if you don't like aubergine, this is a great recipe to try it out and see if it changes your mind. It absorbs all that sauce and just makes it really lovely and velvety and thick. And if you'd like the full recipe, the link is in the video description. So now it's time to add our tomatoes and stock. I'm using these finely chopped tomatoes. They retain the pulpy part of the tomato as well as the juices. So they've got a really lovely rich texture, not watery at all. And they have a lovely vibrant colour. Time now for our tomato puree. This is a double concentrated tomato puree. It's got a really bold and intense flavour and really enhances the colour of the ragu as well. This is great in hot dishes like this, but it's also brilliant in salad dressings, pestos, with pasta. It's really versatile. It takes five and a half kilograms of fresh tomatoes to make one kilogram of this double concentrated tomato puree, which shows just how intense that tomato -y flavor is gonna be. The final ingredient is our beef stock. So I've got it measured out here. You want to pour it into your tomato tin. It should come about three quarters of the way up, and this will just make sure you get all of those extra bits of tomato juice. Then we just wanna stir this in, pop the lid on, and leave this to simmer until it's nice and thick. So now it's time to make my cheese sauce. Now you can make both of these elements in advance if you don't want to be doing it on the day and have them in the fridge ready to assemble. So for the cheese sauce, we're going to start with our butter, pop that into the pan, and then we're just going to let this melt for a few moments. This dish is great for leftovers. You can keep it in the fridge, have it for lunch the next day, and I even think it tastes a little bit better the day after you make it. So the butter has melted, so now it's time to add our plain flour. Now I'm going to whisk it in to make a roux. This is one of the first things my mum taught me to make. It's such a kitchen staple. You definitely want to be using plain flour for this. Anything else will start to bubble up, which isn't quite what we're looking for. You want to whisk that until it's nice and smooth. Cook it for a few minutes so you get rid of that floury taste. And then a big spoonful of tahini. This is a sesame seed paste. It's got a lovely savoury flavour. So once that's nice and smooth, we're going to add in our milk. And don't worry, it goes a little clumpy at first. I really love all the flavours from the Levant and the different ingredients that make this lasagna come to life. It's got such a lovely warm spice element to it. When I visited Lebanon, I loved trying all the different foods and I feel like now we can socialise again. It's a lovely dish to introduce the people you love to something a little bit different. 
So the white sauce has thickened up really nicely, so I'm going to take it off the heat. So no cheese sauce is complete without the cheese. I've got some grated parmesan. I'm just going to pop half of this in here, save the other half for the top. So the final ingredient in our white sauce is the yogurt. Now yogurt is a non-traditional ingredient in white sauce, but it's very traditional in moussaka. And I love how this lasagna kind of is a hybrid of the two. So I'm going to pour that in and then whisk to combine. It gives it a really nice tang. So that's ready. So I'm going to bring it over here whilst we get ready to assemble our lasagna. So the ragu is ready, it's nice and thick and all the aubergines have kind of melted down into this luscious sauce. So this is ready to layer up into our lasagna. If you've made these in advance, just bring them to room temperature or warm them up a little bit if they've gotten a bit clumpy so they're easy enough to spread into your dish. I'm gonna start with a layer of ragu. So just put some nice big spoonfuls to cover the base. You're looking to use about a third of your mixture. So now we're gonna go for our pasta sheets. Now, lots of people think you need to pre-cook these or soak them before you use them, but if they're going in a nice saucy lasagna, you really don't need to. They'll cook in the oven in all that sauce. Make sure you find a dish that fits your sheets of lasagna, but if it doesn't, you can snap them up and no one will really notice. Now I'm gonna go in with a quarter of my white sauce. Pour that over the top, right into the edges. Now we're gonna repeat that with the ragu. Cover over the white sauce. Don't worry if these kind of merge together a little bit. All taste delicious. So once you've got your layer of mince, we're gonna go in with our second layer of pasta. I'm gonna do three layers of pasta in total, but if you wanna go for more, there's nothing stopping you. Some more white sauce, and then our final layer of ragu. So now it's time for that last layer of our lasagna pasta. Let's just place that onto the top. Perfect. Now all that's left to do is cover this with all of our final white sauce. We're gonna make sure that there's no dry pasta showing because it's the sauce that's gonna cook them through and make sure it's nice and soft. A sprinkle of oregano and some Parmesan cheese. So we get a lovely cheesy crust. And now this is gonna go into the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes until that pasta is lovely and soft. Often when I make this dish, I love to use the time when it's baking to pop out, get a little bit of sea air or even catch up on some work and then come home to the reward of a baked lasagna. So there it is, it's ready. I like to keep it really simple when I'm serving this dish, just some nice green salad, maybe some garlic bread, everything you need for a perfect dinner.